and action. Ow! Hey, it's Kevin and Fred. Do you have a referral for us here in Phoenix? There are 30,000 agents here that you could send them to. Why us? Well, for one thing, we'll keep you updated and you'll never have to track down your commission. We'll also make you look really good to your client. And best of all, it helps us keep all this content free. So go to kevinandfred.com slash referral to make the introduction. We'll take great care of them. All right, we're back on the Kevin and Fred show and super excited today to be joined uh, but first time meeting him in person, or I should say face to face, but have spoken to you a few times, Michael Hellickson of uh, Club Wealth. Excited to have you here on the podcast and kind of talk about some of the, the cool things that you've done in your career and are doing with Club Wealth these days. So thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pretty big deal. I can't believe I'm here with the actual Kevin Kaufman. I mean, it's like <laughs> that's a big deal, man. It's almost like you know, back in the day, before, you know, before his tragic passing, you know, it's like being on the Larry King show, man. It's like, you're yeah. an icon. Yeah. Larry, Larry just, just passed. And so maybe, maybe one day I'll, I'll get a cable TV. We'll see what that ever, what cable's I, like I in the future. It. I'd watch I, your cable show. I'd love to do it, man. Cause I, you know, I was, you and I were talking offline. I was like, I love to just, I'm inquisitive. I, I like to know how people, what makes them successful, what makes them tick? Like, how are they doing? One of the things I love about our profession is there's not one way to do it. There's so many different ways of being successful, which I really dig. And so I love to just kind of dig in on that stuff. So well, give us a little bit of your background, Michael. Like how long have you been in real estate? And um, let's and then let's talk about Club Wealth and, and kind of some of the stuff you're doing uh, with your company. Dude, now you're going to make me feel old. So uh, I am coming up on, let me think. yeah, literally, I am coming up in two months on my 30 year anniversary selling real estate. Uh, so yeah, it's been a while. That's awesome. So <laughs> and that 30 years in real estate, that's so you're yeah. you, like Russell, like we've got a mutual friend, Russell Shaw. And like Russell says, you know, 30 years in now, I'm thinking about sticking it out. Like this real estate thing might work out for you. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a crazy ride. You know, I, I actually started selling real estate in high school. And, uh, Got my got my credits early, so I wouldn't have to go to school second semester of my senior year. And and uh, you know it's funny, I did really well comparatively in my senior year. Um, you know, so I was I, I was the top agent in my office for, before I graduated high school. But really, all that meant was I was just less broke than the rest of them. But I was still broke. I mean, it was, you know, it's it's funny how in this business we like to give each other awards. You know, oh that's a oh. million dollar producer. Wow, that guy's a millionaire? No, he's not a millionaire. He's a million dollar person. That means he sold one house worth a million dollars, maybe two half million dollar houses. Woo! <laughs> like that guy could buy a cheeseburger, you know, and let, as long as he does it quick, because he's gonna pay rent too. But yeah, it's you know interesting, I mean? right? There's so many that I love that you mentioned that because that's one of the things that I've it's it's a it's a pet peeve. Is like we we celebrate all these like top line numbers and these things that really don't mean it. Doesn't mean you deposited anything in your bank account at the end of the month, and um, that's what. Let's face it, that's what matters. It's not about the awards. I have never met or, or never been exposed to an industry more adept at celebrating mediocrity than real estate. It's it's crazy. Uh, and and don't get me wrong. Look, I'm not saying everybody's got to be this massive producer and they got to sell all this real estate and that's the only way to do it. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, let's call it what it is. And to your point, you know, if you're not putting it in the bank. It's not money, right? It's 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 top line revenue, but it's not it's not hitting the bottom line, and it's not paying your bills. And in a lot of cases, like in my case, when I was when I was the top agent in that office, my parents were telling me go get a job at McDonald's because you'd make more money. And you know what? They were right. Uh, you know, if you look at it on an hourly basis, I was working a hundred hours a week, sleeping under the desk in the office, just trying to make ends meet, trying to figure it out, uh, spending all kinds of money on marketing, really just trying to dial it in. And yeah, it looked like I was doing better than everybody in the office, but I was freaking broke. And so, you know, really what it comes down to, this is for me, our, our core value at Club Wealth is that no success in the world can compensate for failure in the home, right? So even if you do achieve great success, what you really got to ask yourself is, how's my life? You know, how is this impacting my family? Am I spending time with them? And, you know, I love it when somebody comes to me and says, you know, oh, I did 75 transactions as a solo agent last year. I don't even have a team. And I did 75 units. And I'm and I'm and I ask myself, wow, that, that sounds terrible. <laughs> and they're, that sounds and they get all mad. I know, right? And and they and they'll be like, oh yeah. And, I, and I'll say, well, why are you do why are you doing that? Oh, I do it for my family. Really? 
Well, let me ask you, when's the last time you went on vacation with your family? And when you were gone, were you married to your phone? I, I, I mean, I, it's just, I can't imagine that lifestyle again. And, and that was my life for the first couple of years until I started learning better ways to do it. So let me ask you that. So was there like a turning point for you in your career where you, where you made a, you made a decision? Was it a mentor? Was it an experience? Like, what was it? So, and I'm not saying this because I own a coaching company. I, I own a coaching company because this was my experience. Um, yes. I, so my very first coach was a guy named Mike Ferry, who most people, if you're oh, in real estate and have a pulse today, you probably know who Mike is. Um, and, and I learned a ton from him. And by the way, let me start with this. I've had a lot of coaches in this industry. Most of the people you would recognize today, have, I've had as a coach at one point in time or another. Um, and that's, and I've learned something different from all of them. And, and I've built on the knowledge that I've gained from each of them over the years. And that got me to where, you know, at my, at my peak, I was doing 120 to 180 transactions a month and had 750 listings and active and pending status with just 16 agents on the team. So we did pretty good. We were the number one team in the country for a long time. That said, when I coached with Mike, there was a couple of lessons. And, 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 I, and again, I'll, I'll share lessons I got from a lot of these coaches that I've had. With Mike, the, the number one lesson that I learned is overcoming call reluctance. That was, that was a big piece of, you know, getting over, picking up the phone. But probably the most important lesson that I learned from Mike was if you don't have an assistant, you are one. And, uh, and that stuck with me. And, and so when I, so, so I, when I, I sold real estate for a year, took two years off, went and served a mission for the church, came back, started coaching with Mike. And in that time, when I, when I came back and started coaching with Mike, I knew that I would need to hire an assistant. And when he said that, I said, fine, I don't have any money, but I got a credit card. I'll go figure it out. If I got you know, I can do cash advances on my credit card to pay the scale if I have to. So I hired this awesome assistant. I mean, just phenomenal. Right. And she instantly helped me put a bunch more, like I was doing, you know, I, I, I can't remember the number, but it was way more than double what I was doing before all of a sudden, because I wasn't focused on all the admin work and the stuff that frankly, I sucked at and didn't want to do and didn't enjoy anyway. Um, and I was free to now go focus on putting transactions together. Um, and so actually paying her, I was scared to death when I hired her. I had no idea how I was going to make it work. That's awesome. Uh, oh, I was petrified petrified, but I knew I had to do it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm paying this guy to coach me. He's telling me I should do it. So I'm going to do it. So I did that group it massively from there. And by the way, she, uh, four years later, I ended up marrying her and that's when I went to work for her. Uh, Solid so. decision, buddy. I like it. <laughs> I always tell people any man that says he wears the pants in the family probably lies about other things too. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, long story short, what I, another thing that I learned from, from that experience with Mike was that, you know, there's a limit. There's only so many calls you can make in a day. And, and so there was a ceiling to what I could do in his system. Don't keep me wrong. It was great. It got me to, you know, to doing very well, but I, but I didn't want to burn out and I could see that coming. And then I met, and that's when I, that's when I bumped into somehow Brian Buffini. Um, and Brian was all referrals all the time, right? Mike's all prospecting all the time. Brian's all referrals all the time. And I didn't give up the prospecting, but instead I added the referral systems that I learned from Brian and it worked. And I doubled my income again. And then I realized, hey, wait a minute, there's still a limit, right? This isn't scalable yet, right? It's growing, but it's not scalable. Uh, and so then I started, you know, I, I coached with Joe Stumpf, with Coach Ken, with, I mean, you name it. I started coaching all these guys uh, with, you know, you look at like a Craig Proctor where, you know, he was all marketing all the time. And, I, and it just really kind of formed my belief system that you've got to have a diversified lead flow. And you don't want one or two lead sources. You really want to have like, if you want to make six figures in this business consistently all the time and, and have it be just like clockwork, you want to have 10 to 15 lead sources. You want to make seven figures, you need 25 to 35 lead sources. And, and it's really making seven figures in this business is not, well, first of all, it's not impossible. It's actually very, very simple. It's just, a little bit of work and you got to put some systems in place and you got to, you got to trust people that have been there. Um, so anyway, um, I like that. Now it's, it's a very good point. So let, let me ask you, so, so you, you, you marry your, so you, you know, your wife is now in charge and you're working for her, but let me, let me ask you, cause like I can see, you know, your zoom background, it says club wealth and it's got, and it's got the logo there. 
what point did you say, I've got to take what I've learned from these other coaches? Cause you sound like me, like you're, you're out seeking, um, others experts opinions and how you can grow and things you should do at what point do you go you know what i've got a lot here i've learned i've gained so much knowledge i've got a lot i can pass on to others what was the turning point there or and maybe even when was that honestly i never said that to myself that um it never it that's not how it came about actually what happened was um, I had some people start, and, and this happens as you grow in your business and anybody that's doing any kind of production at all, they're starting to get people in their office asking them, you know, how do you do it? And how does this yep. work? And blah, blah. then you start, you know, let's say you get into a coaching program and you start going out and you start traveling and going to events and stuff. And, and more people start saying, well, how are you doing this? And how's that working? And for me, my, the, the challenge I was experiencing was I didn't, I didn't feel like there was a coaching company. I got to a point where, you know, and, and this was really when I started doing, you know, we started breaking the three, $4 million a year in gross commission income mark. That's when we started, you know, you start, like you start getting up into a thousand transactions a year and it, and, and, it, and, and there's, there, there just wasn't, there just wasn't a coaching program out there that felt right for me. Like I, it, it just, for whatever reason. And at simultaneous that, I was starting to get to the point where a lot of these people that I had a lot of respect for and was learning a lot from start saying, "Hey, Michael, wh why aren't you a coach? What do you, you know, why why don't you help our team? Why don't you, why don't you teach us some of the stuff you're doing? Start helping us out." And so it kind of started organically because yeah, Club Wealth actually in its in its origin was not a, a real estate coaching company; it was a real estate investing coaching company. So basically, what we were doing is we were teaching our clients how to buy investment properties. Uh, primarily buy and hold. And it kind of morphed into now we were also teaching real estate agents. And then we stopped teaching investors and focused 100% on real estate agents. Um, and so what I learned though, is we got in about 2010, we had about 80 clients. You know, I had like number one, number two, and number five at Keller Williams worldwide. We had number one at Remax worldwide. We had, you know, all these big producers that were coaching with us. And I got to a point where I started realizing, man, I cannot do both. I'm having a really hard time being a world-class team leader for my real estate company and being a world-class leader in the coaching company. And it got to a point where I had to, I had to make a decision and um, at simultaneous to that, and this is, we don't have time for this, but at some point, you know, if you ever go to our website, take a look at the about Michael section, there's a, um, they'll tell you kind of at some, at some point we sold our business. So basically in 2011, we sold our business. Um, and there's a lot more to that story than just we sold our business. Um, but at the same time, I thought, you know, I'm going to take a break. I'm, I'm going to take a break from real estate. And my wife and I literally, we called all our coaching clients up and, and said, Hey, look, you can call us for free advice, but we're not going to, we're not going to charge you for coaching anymore. And, you know, cause my head, and my heart just warmed in it at that point. And so I took three and a half years, traveled around the world with the family and, and, and thought that I was retired. And let me start with this. For me, I, after three and a half years of retirement, I felt like, man, I'm a moron. Why in the world would I retire from the, an industry that's so, when I, when I retired, I was working 12 days a month, making a net really solid seven figure income. Why in the world would you just walk away from that? It's dumb. And so, and it, it, it's just too easy. It's, it's like having a real estate license is like having a license to print cash. I mean, it's right. like, it, it's just dumb. So long story short, I started getting calls from some people, some of these people that we had coached previously in 2014. And they're saying, hey, look, you need to get back into real estate. You need to get back into coaching and, and start working with our teams. And I talked a lot with Tara about it. Tara's my wife. Talked a lot with Tara about it and prayed about it. And, and she and some of my friends at the time were very, very clear with me that, hey, man, selling real estate was great for you, but and, and, and that's where the money's at. There's no money in coaching. I mean, let's call it what it is. I mean, dude, there's, I made way more money selling real estate than I'll ever make as a coach. And that's okay. And that's not a complaint, by the way. But I was born to do what I do today. I was born to help people grow their business. That's what I was put on this planet to do is help people, not just to grow their business, but to do it in a way that they don't have to screw up their family in the process. Um, and so, yeah, that's when we said, okay, well, if we're going to do this, then I'm not going to sell real estate. I'm just going to focus on growing the coaching company and really helping other people. Um, and within two years, we were well, actually two and a half years. It took us to be the number one coaching company in the team and brokerage space. So it was pretty, it's pretty intense. And, that's awesome. Uh, 
Yeah. So, so tell me, like, what does that look like today? Like, what is, do you guys have a, is Club Wealth have like a specialized, hey, this is really what we focus on from a coaching perspective with, with teams? So, yeah, we've got, well, it's sort of, we, so we're in both the team and the brokerage space and we, we have individual agents that coach with us too, but you know, we're really focused on, it, it, even if it's just, you have an assistant that, and, and that's fine, a, an agent and their assistant, that's a team. At, at the very yeah. least, you need to have an assistant. Um, otherwise you're doing $15 an hour work that you don't enjoy and that you're probably not good at. Uh, but, um, but we've got just over 75 coaches at Club Wealth now and um, every coach. Yeah, I know, right? It's, it's crazy. Uh, every one of our coaches sells more real estate than the people they coach. Um, you know, so if you're doing 100 transactions a year, your coach does 250. If you're doing 250, your coach does 500. Oh, if you're hold doing on a second. Is that a policy? Oh, yeah. That's oh, a yeah. policy. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. And yeah. I love that because yeah. one of my biggest, I'm, this is, uh, this is not me saying that people that don't sell real estate can't ever coach people that do sell real estate. However, one of my biggest pet peeves is when we've got people that don't sell real estate, have never sold real estate or just haven't sold it at a high level. And they try to coach to this theory of something they've never walked through in their own life. I, I struggle. I really struggle with that. Like you can coach me on mindset and maybe running a business and doing things. But when it comes to what we do to kind of day in and day out on the real estate side, I really struggle with that. And there's so many of these coaching organizations out there that quite frankly, they're just hiring as many coaches as they can. And people who couldn't really make it as a realtor become a coach because they couldn't make it as a realtor. And I, that it, it grosses me out to be frank with you. I am a hundred percent there with you. And that's why I didn't go sign up and be a coach for somebody else's company. That's why it, I, I did not want to start a co my own coaching company. I did not want to do that. I, I, I had no interest in doing it. It's a dude. I lost money. When we started growing club off, I lost money for two and a half years. The first two and a half years, I wrote checks, six figure checks to get it off the ground and get it towards that today. I did not want to do that, but I didn't believe in the, anybody can be a coach and you know, you don't have to about produce the people that you're coaching philosophy. I just, I feel very strongly that, you know, if, if, uh, if I want to learn how to do 500 transactions a year, well, by golly, I need someone who's done 500 transactions a year to show me the way. Cause they know things that you just don't know if you haven't gone through it. Yep. There's no substitute for experience. Um, and now, you know, people make the argument, oh, but what about, you know, Kobe Bryant and, you know, his coach doesn't, you know, Phil Jackson never played basketball at that level. This isn't sports. Okay. This is a lot more complicated than sticking a freaking ball in a hoop. All right. And, and not that they don't have intricacies and things they got to learn all that, but running a business, this is a big deal. There's a lot of moving pieces and there's things that happen that just let's talk about the HR things. What do you do the first time your assistant embezzles money from you? How do you handle that? Yeah. Before you call the police, you call your freaking coach because we've been through it. We know what to do. We know how to prevent that from happening the next time. You know, it, there's just so many things like that, that you can, you can avoid these, these pitfalls and you can shortcut the learning curve by working with somebody who's done it before. I mean, we take people now, look at Nicole Gaudet. So Nicole is one of our coaches. When, when I met Nicole, and I can tell you over and over and over again, this is very common. We'll meet somebody that's doing, uh, and I, by the way, I don't care what brand they're with. We work with everybody. I don't care if it's Remax, EXP, Keller Williams. I don't freaking care who they're with. You can be successful in any brand. You're yep. the reason for your success. Now, some brands have bells and whistles that are, that are more appropriate for you and your belief system and what's going to, you know, what's going to resonate with you. Awesome. But when it all comes down to it, the brand is not going to go do the work for you. You got to go do the work. Fact. Right. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you know, you, for, like you're with EXP, great model, by the way, lots of opportunity for folks. People either love it or hate it. It's funny. It cracks me up. It's weird. Um, yeah. and, right. Like I've got one of my kids is at EXP and one of my kids is in, 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 in an independent brokerage. And you know what? They're both going to get to choose how, whether they're going to be successful or not. And it's not going to have anything to do with brand. But at the end of the day, they're not going to blame it on the brand if they're not successful. It's them. So anyway, that said, um, this Nicole as an example. So, and she and many people like her, they'll come in and they're, they're doing 10, 15 transactions a year has been their best year. And they've been in business for seven or eight years and they've just never been able to break through that. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, let's, let's get working with you. So Nicole in her first 14 months with us went from, she's never done her best year ever was I think 15 transactions at the time. Her first year, 14 months with us, she did 150 transactions. Um, you know, I look at Mike Novak, you ever heard of Mike Novak? I don't yeah, know. Of course. 
Okay. So he's Mike, up in your, he's in, he's up in your neck of the woods. Yeah. He's in Bellingham. Mike's a great guy. Right. So when I met Mike, his, he was brand new in the business had been in six months. He coached with another company and I won't say who, um, uh, but it reminds with Fom Terry. Um, and he was, I'm just joking. I'm so wrong. But uh, so he'd been with this other coaching company for a while. And he's like, wait a minute, everybody keeps talking about club off. Like what's the deal? What's going on over there? So in, in his sixth month, he signs up for coaching with us. In his first 12 months with us, he netted, not gross, netted a million dollars in his first 12 months with us. And, and here's the thing. It's not rocket science, but, he, but you, you, you have to start with somebody who's willing to put the work in, who's fairly intelligent. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. Look at me. I'm not a rocket scientist. Sure. You yeah. don't have to be a rocket scientist, but you have to be of at least average intelligence <laughs> if you really want to you know, do well. Um, and you've got you've to be coachable. And if you'll do that, and if you'll implement the stuff you're taught, we've got the system. The systems are straightforward, right? We can say, here, go do this, go do that. And here's what you do next. And when you get there, we'll tell you the next five steps and exactly how to do them. That stuff's pretty straightforward, but you got to choose to be the right person in that system. And if you do, there's no reason why you can't. So we have a tiered system. There's no reason why you can't jump one to two tiers every year, which essentially means you should be able to double your income every year until you start hitting about, you know, when you start getting into the 700, you know, 500, 750 transactions a year, Mark, you should be able to add another 50% per year from then forward. That you, so you, you raise an interesting question for me. Um, so you, you obviously you're around a bunch of agents uh, and brokers that who do that kind of massive volume, mm -hmm. let's say 500 plus transactions, mm -hmm. right? What, what are some of the common things that you see with that people that can't get over that i'm going to use 500 as a as an arbitrary number they can't get from 500 to 700 or maybe that they do easily they actually get to 750 and then to a thousand like what are some of those common themes that prevent people and what are those common themes that actually help people go way past that well number the, number one and number two are the same answer the, the number one answer for both is the same answer and it's up here mindset 100 percent mindset uh, that's the first problem because people hit these mental blocks, you know, number, and, and the worst part of mindset, especially when you start getting to that level, you start getting to 500 to 750 transactions a year is complacency. And you, you, you start being successful enough that you really don't have to make more. And that's, look, if you don't have to, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I'm going to work, right? I'm going to put in a certain number of hours per day. I might as well be efficient and effective with them, Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not telling you, you got to work more than 40 hours a week. I mean, like I said, I'll put it this way at 500 or more transactions a year. There's no reason why you should need to work more than eight hours a week. That's it. And in eight hours a week, you can maintain a business at 500 to 750 transactions a year. It's not, it's not tough. In fact, it's actually very easy to do at that level, but to get past the 700, you know, the five and seven, you know, to really start really scaling beyond that, You've got to be focused when you're at work. You've got to you've got to make decisions, and you've got to you've got to get out of your own head. You've got to you've got to be able to make decisions that scare you. I'll give you an example. The first time you hire somebody that you're going to have to pay six figures a year on a salary, that's a game changer for your business. Yeah. Right. I mean, okay. and that's that's something that most people, because you think about it, most people that get to that level in this industry, they came from nothing. Right. Most of the people that do very, very well in this industry were not born with a silver spoon in their mouth. They started from zero. They were out knocking doors, calling and cold calls and expireds and FISBOs, just like most other agents out there. The difference is that every step of the way, they did whatever it took to get to that next level. Does that make sense? Now, the yeah. challenge is, how do I do that? And not end up in divorce, not alienating my kids, not for, you know, not having my kids grow up without mom or dad. You know, how do I get to that level and still take care of my family in the process? And, and not just financially take care of, I mean, like really have a relationship with them uh, in the process. And that's, you know, again, so, so biggest thing is mindset. Second thing is, is the ability to, to, to really truly recruit, hire and train the right people. Um, and then to trust those people and delegate to them properly, uh, that's a skill set. And it's a very different skill set than selling houses. Yep. Uh, and the, the very best of the best, oh, use Robert Slack as an example. Robert, Robert has one lead source. Okay. I want you to just think about that for a second. One lead source, realtor.com. That's Robert's lead source. 6,000 transactions last year. 
400 and, I don't know, 454 or 555 agents or something like that on his team, right? And yes, it's a team, right? They're on 50-50 splits and all that kind of stuff. Like they're not, this. it's not rocket science. So why is he doing so much better than everybody else? Because he, what he dialed in was his recruiting and onboarding process at a high level. He gets it. It's about getting the right people on the bus and putting those people in the right seat on the bus and then making sure they have everything they need to be successful and then get the heck out of their way. Yeah, that's solid, man. I like that. So yeah. let me let me ask you this. Um, it's you know you and I recording this. It's it's January, end of January, twenty twenty one. Last year has been weird. It's been different. Like um, you know, some people are experiencing their their greatest you know run in real estate. Others are experiencing the worst. Like. What, when I say that to you, like what comes to mind and what do you share with people, whether they're in your coaching program already or not? Well, first of all, I get excited when I hear that because I can tell you that the vast majority of our clients had their very best year ever in 2020. Um, so when COVID hit in March, uh, we immediately saw, and everybody starts freaking out, right? And so I sat back and I said, what do we, what, what do our clients really need to hear right now? What's really going to help them? What's going to move the needle for them? What's going to get them through this? And the first thing that I talked to him about was Shin Tzu. You know who Shin Tzu is? Vaguely. Wrote The Art of War. Yes, that's right. All right. So Shin Tzu's famous quote is that where there's chaos, there's opportunity. Yep. And so what we started focusing on is, and, and you know, even in, in uh, I believe it's in Japanese, might be Chinese, but I think it's, it's either Japanese or Chinese. Um, you know, when you look at crisis, uh, the word crisis is made up of two different kanji or characters that stand for danger and opportunity. So again, where there's chaos, there's opportunity, right? Where there's danger, there's opportunity. And, um, and the key is, are you looking for the opportunity or are you looking for the problem, right? Are you focused on the problem? Or are you focused on the opportunity? So when everybody else was saying, oh, you can't show houses, you can't do this. And we're not talking about legally. We're talking about, you know, when, when cities were shutting or states were shutting down and all this, most people are freaking out and, and thinking about all the things that they no longer can do. And you know what we did? Together with our clients, we got to work and we figured out what can we do? Screw what we can't do. Don't even think about what you can't do. What can we do? Legally, ethically, morally, and you know, without putting people in danger, what can we do? And we had people almost immediately, and we've had people for years doing listing appointments online and all this stuff. And it just last year finally became popular with everybody else because of COVID. So a lot of our clients were already doing that. It wasn't hard for them to transition to just doing that. Um, but that's really what it comes down to. So I would suggest this. There's, there could be a lot of reasons why you may not have had your best year ever in 2020. And if that's the case for you, I would suggest you have to identify why is that. Is it because I got sick and was sick for a long period of time? And, and long period of time, meaning more than a month. Uh, you know, If I was sick for two months out of the year or more, then that's probably you know, going to affect my year, but it's still recoverable. Even a couple of months, still recoverable. Did I have loss in my family? Did I lose someone I love? Did, and, and did that impact me? And that now becomes up here, right? You know, the last thing your loved one would want, and I don't know about you, but I bet you don't, you know, if you, if, if you died tomorrow, my hunch is you don't want your family to stop their progress in their life right? Yes, you want them to love you and mourn you, but you also want them to move forward and continue with their life. And I would imagine that your loved ones probably feel the same way if you had, if you had a loss like that. Um, and, so, and not to be insensitive, look, it's for real. People have died and it's been, it's a bad thing, right? It's been too, right. Um, and so that, that being said, there's a lot of crap that's going to happen to you in life. There's a lot of bad stuff that's going to happen to you. What matters is how do you handle it? What do you do with that? Do you allow it to defeat you? Or do you find ways to push past it and move on and move forward? And so as you look at 2020, if you didn't have your best year ever, you have, you have to be really honest with you, with yourself and assess, why is that? And what do I need to do better this year? And I will tell you, it boils down to one thing. You want to know the one thing that people have to change if they want to be successful in 2021. And if you had your best year ever, by the way, if you don't address this, you probably won't have as good a year in 2021. If, if 2020 was your best year yet, and you, you are very likely among a lot of people that I think are at risk of not having as good a year in 2021, if they don't address this one word. I feel like we're about to have a city slickers, Billy Crystal and curly moment. It's the one thing. 
Tell me, tell me. <laughs> is that, is that, I'm trying to figure out which one I would be. Does that make me curly bill? That makes uh, you curly, yeah, yeah. So it, the one word, and I hope you guys, have, if you have a pen, write this down. It's habits. There's nothing more important to success than habits, period, nothing. Nothing you learn, nothing you say, nothing, nothing that you do once, uh, nothing that you attempt, nothing that you want to do, nothing that you think about, nothing that you write affirmations about, nothing that you chant out loud. No, no, hey, listen, none of that crap matters if you don't fix your habits, period. You know, I don't care what your goals are. What are your habits? Show me what you did in the last two weeks, and I'll show you what 2021 is going to look like for you. Guarantee it. You show me your calendar for the last two weeks. I can tell you how, and if I know your average sales price in your market, I can tell you within 25 grand, how much you're going to make this year. Guarantee it. It's, it's not hard. Solid. I, I can't disagree. I love it. Um, so habits. So that's, that's a big deal. So um, when, so when someone, okay, so there's, a, there's someone listening right now. And they're in their whatever level of success they're at, but they're going, what do you, Michael, what, do you, what the hell do you mean by that? Like, okay, habits, like, what do you mean? Let's expand on it. I don't care what you do one day. I care what you do every day. Right. So as an example, let's say I'm newish to the business or I'm a, you know, I'm doing fewer than 25 transactions a year. Okay. Your habit that you, the number one habit that you've got to be in every day is you have to set one appointment every day, five days a week. If you don't set one appointment every day, five days a week, stick a fork in yourself, you're done. Like it's a matter of time. You will not last in this business long-term, at least not at a high level. You will always be worried about money. You will always be stressed out about money. Um, and so it, now if I'm, if, if I'm doing 25 to, you know, let's say even 150 transactions a year or more, my goal should be at least uh, excuse me, if I'm, if I'm at 25 to 150 transactions a year, I need to be setting two appointments every day, every day. But if I really want to be very successful in this business, my goal should be three appointments every day. Um, and when I say my goal, my habit, right? I, and and I, I think I'd love to see if I could get everybody to just eliminate the word goals from their vocabulary and start using the word commitments. Yeah. Right. I mean, if I, if I make a commitment to myself that I'm going to set Let's just use two. If I, if I say I'm going to set two appointments a day, no matter what, do I possess the integrity to show up every day and be honest with myself and, and, and to honor the commitment that I made to myself as if it was a commitment I made to the most important person in my life, which by the way, you are, <laughs> I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, my wife's my most important person in my life. No, you're the most, if you die, you're, you're, you're not there for your wife. Okay. If you really care about your wife, you need to take care of what's up here first. Now you can take, it's like putting the oxygen mask on. You yeah. First you put your mask on, then you can put her mask on. But here's the deal. You've got to treat those, those commitments that you make to yourself as sacred. And that means being in the habit of setting these appointments. If you're not setting the right number of appointments every day, and I would say the minimum is one, so five a week. If I get to Friday and I don't have my five appointments, guess what I'm doing? I'm setting appointments until I get to my five. You know, when I was selling real estate, I was, I was personally not counting my team, not counting REO, which was about half our business. I was personally listing 50 to 75 houses a month. Now people think that's insane and that's not possible. It is possible. And it actually wasn't even that hard. What I would do is I would go on six to eight appointments a day. And in between my six to eight appointments, I would make my follow-up calls. I didn't have to do any lead gen calls because all my leads at that point in my career were inbound. So all I had to do was follow up with 115 to 125 people a day from my car in between appointments. Somebody doesn't show up, no big deal. I pull the car over, I make my calls. Not a big deal, right? Super straightforward. Uh, and by doing that, I would set six to eight appointments a day and I would list 50 to 75 houses a month. So you're telling me when someone no showed you, instead of just being pissed off and, and calling it a day for the rest of the day, you would, and, and driving back to the office, you just pull over and make phone calls and go get your next appointment? So actually, here's exactly what I would do. So let's say I pull up to Kevin's house. I'm supposed to do a listing appointment with Kevin. He doesn't show up. No, I don't get mad. I get on the front porch. I grab my, where's my phone? I grab my phone and I go, I stand in front of your house. Uh, you know, so I've knocked on the door. I've rang the doorbell. Nobody answers. I stand in front of the house. I take a little selfie video of myself in front of your house. And I say, hey, Kevin, it's Michael. I'm out here at the house. I'm guessing you got caught up in traffic. No big deal. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and wait here. I'm just gonna make follow-up calls from my car until you get here. No big deal. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I love what I see from the outside. And I send the video. 
Then I go sit in my car and I make phone calls for 20 minutes. Love it. At 20 minutes after I get back up, if you're still not there, I'm assuming at this point you're not showing up, right? So at 20 minutes after I go back and I do another selfie video in front of the house. Hey, Kevin, it's Michael again. Hey, I, I, I'm guessing something came up, you, you know, and I get it. I totally understand. No hard feelings. Hey, listen, I want you to know that I am committed to taking care of you. So I'm going to call. I'm going to, I'm going to text you. I'm going to email you. I'll probably even stop by from time to time, but you have my word and my commitment that I will not stop until I have connected with you and seen the inside of your house, because I want to make sure I don't drop the ball on my end because you deserve the best. And I, I promise I'm going to serve you at the, at the highest level possible. So reach out to me. Here's my phone number and we'll, we'll chat soon. And then I go to my next appointment. And when I get to my next appointment, I'm usually there about 15 minutes early at that point. So I'll sit there in front of that appointment. I'll make calls until it's time for me to go to the front door. But now what they, what that first seller knows is Kevin knows, Hey man, if I don't respond to this guy, he's going to stalk me. He's going to just keep coming. Right. Yeah. But, but I framed it in a way it wasn't, Hey, I'm going to be a stalker. It was, you deserve the best. I'm going to give it to you. I am oh, not going to drop the ball in my end. I'm going to make sure I take care of you. Yeah. Love it. Um, all right, man. So we're winding up here. I it's before before I ask my last question. Um, number one, if someone wants to learn more about you, like what's the website? Is there social media channels that you prefer? Like, how does someone go learn more about Michael and Club Wealth? Here's what I would do. I would send me. I mean, yeah, certainly you can go to our website, go to clubwealth.com. Um, there's lots to learn there. We got a Facebook group. You know, it's the Club Wealth Real Estate Agent Mastermind. Um, but tell you what, I'll do. If you guys, can I, can I give them a, can I give them a bunch of lead sources? Yeah, for sure. All right. So tell you what I'm going to do. If you guys shoot me a text, I'm going to give you a number, shoot me a text to this number and text the words club wealth to this number. And I will give you, so we have a list of about 109 lead sources we recommend to our clients. I'll give you 17 of my best ones. Um, and uh, the way you get those, you just text the words club wealth to 727-287-5993. I'll give it to you again, 727-287-5993. 287-5993. Text the words club wealth that number and I'll, I'll, my system will automatically send you um, 17 of the lead sources of the, of the best lead sources we refer to our clients. And that list gets updated. We're actually getting ready to do an update on that list this month. Um, and it gets updated each year. We update it with uh, the best lead sources for the previous year. So um, yeah. Right Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. All right. So What's the one, like, what's the one thing that we haven't covered? I, I like, I, there's no way we could fit it all into a 30 minute, 45 minute conversation. Um, but knowing that we gotta, we gotta wind, I'm gonna call it part one down right now. What's the one thing that we, I, I gotta ask you or I should have asked you before we go today? Well, I don't know that there's anything in particular you should have asked me. I think you've done a phenomenal job. I think you're a great interviewer. Uh, and by the way, I appreciate you having me on. Um, I would say though, if there's, if there's, there's so many things I want to share there's So, and I would love to come back and do some more. I'll, I'll say this, I'll give you a couple of things. There's three things. One, there's three habits you've got to be in. You got to be lead generating, lead follow-up and lead converting every single day. It has to be every single day. You got to set those one to three appointments every single day, no matter what. You got to stop hanging around with turkeys. We have a, a, a values in Club Wealth that's eagles don't flock with turkeys. Yeah, you know, stop thinking you're going to be an eagle and hang out with turkeys. And and you define what turkeys are in your life. I don't know what that means for you. You decide what a turkey is in your life. But you know what? Whoever they are, get them out of your life. That doesn't mean that you ignore them and you don't still love people that maybe aren't going to help you move ahead or that maybe are you know bad for you in one way or another. We still love those people, but we don't spend our time with those people. We spend yeah. time with people who make us want to be a better person, who make us want to move the needle forward in all five key areas of our life. Um, so there's there's so much more, but here's the thing. Get out of your own head, be humble, listen to people who have been where you want to go, stop listening to people who haven't, and develop the right habits. And the rest will work itself out. Right on, man. I love it. Michael Hellickson, thank you very much. Clubwealth.com. Uh, we will get that phone number and drop it in the notes too for the texting for the lead sources. And uh, let's make sure we schedule a follow-up here not, in not too long, man. I'd love that. That'd be great. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for, uh, for listening in again today. And uh, we'll talk to you next week on the Kevin and Fred show.